John Fedger here with mobilehomeinvesting.net. In this quick video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the time needed to start uh, and continue investing safely and productively in mobile homes. Now, I know what you might be thinking already. John, I know how much time it takes. The more time, the better. You know, five hours is better than zero hours. 10 hours is better than five hours. 20 hours is better than 10 hours. And while that's accurate to some extent, it's important to be doing the right things. You can spend so much time, which time is money, time is lost of you know other opportunities and other things that you could be doing uh, if you're spinning your wheels if you're spending your time doing things that you shouldn't be doing so in my opinion it's not so much how much time that you have because any time done strategically is better than no time but the goal you know the the questions I think are what are your realistic goals with the time that you have because you know if you're watching this video, I hope you're not to ask, saying like, well, could I quit my job and then I'd have a bunch of free time? You know, in my opinion, the time that you have right now, whether it's 10 hours, 20 hours, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 or more, um, there's different things to do depending on the time that you have. So it's not a question of the time, it's more of a question of what activities am I gonna, is best for that time? And then also, what are my realistic goals? So that's what I wanna talk to you about on this video. There's a bunch of things behind me. Stick tuned to the end because we're gonna talk about out. There's a graph right here that I've seen with my experience. Um, if you outsource things, if you don't, if you start with 20 to 30 hours or 40 to 50 to 60 or below that, what you can expect. So I want to talk to you about that in just a minute, but let's assume something with this video. Let's assume three different things. The first one is we are uh, investing in mobile homes inside of parks on private land that you're gonna own the land as well, and mobile homes that must be moved. We are open-minded to most mobile homes out there if, if, it's a, if it's a good deal. Speaking of good deals, no skinny deals. You can go out tomorrow and purchase a home retail price. That is not a good deal most of the time. Uh, depends how you sell it, but it's not a. that's typically not what we wanna buy, retail priced homes. So when you do sell it on payments, I've made another video that talks about this, which you can find in the description. It should look like this or the video thumbnail will look like this, but the link is in the description. And I talk about the different types of deals inside of mobile home parks, but at minimum, we wanna get all of our money back in six to 12 months or less, all the money that you put out on the deal, if you're selling it on payments. We wanna make $300 minimum cash flow per home, and five years minimum incoming payments when we sell this, if we're selling it on payments. So that's what I mean by no skinny deals. Like, you know, don't just go out to do a deal to do a deal. Uh, and then also let's assume that this is active investing. It's not just you lending money. You physically are gonna be building up a reputation and a name for yourself locally if you aren't already. Buying, selling, renting, wholesaling, moving mobile homes and more. So let's jump into this and let's talk about um, you know, the time that you have what is the main the main time investment the things that we're doing in your first 30 days so let's 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 think about that you know depending on the time that you have these tasks can be done uh, with anyone working well I don't want to say with anyone, but with most people working a nine to five job, an eight to five job, five days a week, um, this is the kind of things that most of your hours will be going to. In the beginning, for the first 30 days, after 30 days, it's a little bit different, but for your first 30 days, the amount of time you have, however much time you already know that you have, it's gonna be going to parks, you're gonna be introducing yourself to managers and owners, driving around, going to appointments, first and second appointments with sellers, making offers to sellers, sellers and managers and park owners. Also phone calls when you're not able to actually get there in person. Uh, and then this does not include in your first 30 days at least 20 other minor items such as starting your business, such as knowing what buyers are paying, uh, and the list goes on. But like the main points of time that you're gonna be going through, there's no way for me to sugarcoat the fact that I want you getting through many of the communities in your area. You don't have to go there 20, 30 times, but I do want you going there at least once to do a handful of things. So uh, if you don't know all the parks in your area, I made another video, um, which can be found in the description, the thumbnail looks like this, and it talks about how to find m most like 80% or so of the mobile home parks around you. So if you wanna check out that video after this one, please do. And then you'll see that, well, you have to get to these parks. You know, there's no way for me to 
you sugarcoat the fact that you have to get out there. So that's for your first 30 days. And so after your first 30 days, you still have the same amount of time. Every, uh, every week you have some of the weekend, you have after work maybe one or two hours uh, here and there to go to appointments. You have maybe 30 minutes or an hour lunch break that you can consistently make calls. That's the time that we're talking about. Now, after 30 days, realize that we're doing all of this stuff right here. You're going through parks, you're driving, you're making offers, you're expanding your territory, you're talking to new people, you're going to more appointments, you're making offers. Now we only add more to your plate. We're not subtracting or taking anything off just yet. You're not outsourcing anything just yet, at least in my opinion. So 30 plus days, the majority of your time is still going to the things that we just mentioned right here in your first 30 days. Not to mention you're going to be following up, you're going to be negotiating, we have paperwork and closings to deal with, manage, managing handymen, advertising for buyers, screening and approving said buyers, selling the homes, managing them, and this does not include 50 plus at least other smaller minor items. And to do um, uh, and your, and your uh, due diligence list, when you're buying a home, uh, after you close on it, what repairs to make. I mean, there's yeah, way more than 50 minor things to do. And there's like a bunch of if-then scenarios. If this is happening, we wanna do this. So just keep in mind that the point I'm making here is that in the time that you have, we're just adding more. Every single week that goes by, you're adding more and more and more to your plate. Now, you might be thinking, John, my plate is full. I have my you know, normal job, I have church, I have uh, school, I have a family, I have other obligations that I do. Uh, so you know, I need to start outsourcing some of this. We're gonna get to that in just a minute, but I wanna talk about some of the things not to outsource right away. Um, overseeing advertising, talking to sellers, appointments uh, with, with sellers appointments and dealing with sellers, just dealing with them in general, uh, making offers and negotiating, overseeing rehabs, overseeing the sales process. Now you can outsource the rehabs right away. You can outsource the sales process pretty quickly, but I still want you to oversee it. At least that's my personal advice to you. Approving, uh, like final approval of your buyer, and then also management. If you're selling the home on payments or for cash, a management really isn't needed because there's relatively little management. And then renting the home, that's optional. If you want to get a manager, a property manager, when you're renting a mobile home, that's your call if you'd like to. I have some thoughts on that, but you know, ultimately that's, I mean, both of these are your decisions, but that's my kind of advice right there. So now let's talk about sort of this graph and sort of to tie everything together, what does this look like for you uh, when you get started or if you're, you're already investing, you know, moving forward, what, what can you plan on? So let me, uh, before I remove the uh, pink papers, um, on this side, we have the time invested weekly. Now this is not you just dipping your toe into real estate. This is you aiming to close at least 10 deals a year or more. And we're doing strategic tasks here. We're not just spinning our wheels. So we need to assume that we know what we're doing. We're investing X number of hours every week, aiming to close five, uh, I'm sorry, 10 mobile homes uh, every single year. So, or, or more, 10 or more mobile homes. And then this is kind of the time that you are investing along this axis. This is one month, this is six month, and then it goes on. So let me remove this and show you this. Now this is what I've seen over the years. This is from personal experience. This is with dealing with other folks. Um, and keep in mind your business, your career, your life, uh, it doesn't fit necessarily on this graph. When you first get started, if you're starting with 10 to 20 hours per week, Admittedly, that's not as much as 30 to 50 hours per week. But once you, once you start with 10 to 20 hours per week, in my opinion, you should be aiming for anywhere from a half of an appointment every week, and your appointment should be with qualified sellers, not just any random seller that's selling a retail priced home, but you're gonna be going to about half an appointment to two appointments every single week, investing 10 to 20 hours. Now, if you invest 30 to 50 hours every week, which is a long period of time, uh, and we'll talk about what these little dashes mean because that's, that's the outsourcing. Uh, but if you're investing 30 to 50 hours strategically, you should be going to two to four valid appointments with sellers that have to be uh, on land in parks that have to be moved uh, every single week. Now you might notice with 10 to 20 hours, if this is you, the graph is going down slowly 
over time and that's because you're building up more and more of a reputation over time if you are a quality person that does what they say they're going to do and lets people know they can always call you back you are going to be getting calls back from managers from owners from sellers from dealers from other people in the area so over time you know the hours that you have to invest are going to go down a little bit naturally but you can also start to outsource and that's something you should consider if you only have 10 to 20 hours per week i would prefer or i would encourage you to a eventually start outsourcing. You can start outsourcing some of this. It's first important, in my opinion, to understand everything. Do everything yourself so you get a really good understanding and moving forward, you know, people can't fool you. So know what you're doing right here or, or work someone that knows what they're doing. And then after a month, you can start to outsource a couple things. Now you're still gonna be investing that same time. Just because you only have 10 to 20 hours, I still, in my opinion, would like you to maximize these 10 to 20 hours. So keep on investing 10 to 20 for at least the first, in my opinion, year or more investing in your business. Now if you have 30 to 50 hours, that is a substantial amount of time every single week. Again, that can be on the weekends, after work a couple days, during uh, your lunch break, and after about six months, if you want to start outsourcing, and again, you could start outsourcing a little bit sooner, you know, but if you're comfortable investing 30 to 50 hours, you want to start outsourcing, and then the, the, the trajectory uh, of how productive you are goes up. You know, you're not investing this time, but people are investing it into your business. So although the time goes up, that's being totally invested in your business, your time goes down. And again, every time that you start outsourcing more and more, we can actually make more of these kind of going up like this. But, but it does start going up as soon as you start outsourcing. But then again, do you, do you keep investing 30 to 50 hours? Or do you start to scale out? Do you start doing something else? Do you start focusing on you know, other things that are taking more of your time um, because your business is growing, because you have more places to look at, because you, you can't handle all of this by yourself. So eventually you can start looking to outsource um, a number of tasks. But in my opinion, don't do that too soon. Understand this business. Wait at least one month, but wait six months if you can to start really outsourcing thing and understand you know, where do you need the help, where is your business lacking, uh, and also what can't you do um, every single day or most days of the week that you need to. Admittedly, some of our activities are more important that they're done by you than by somebody else. Everything else or a lot of other things can totally be outsourced and your business can grow and grow, but some things, uh, until you find the right person, you know, I don't want you sabotaging your business by outsourcing too quickly. So I hope that this video made sense. It's sort of an, a little bit of an abstract topic because you know, you're different than anybody else, plus the time and the obligations and your goals. Um, that you have, and also the capital that you have as well. Um, go ahead and click uh, the link in the description. There's another video that was made about the cash that you should have investing in mobile homes. You know, what does that look like to you? Beginning, middle, end, or not end, but beginning, middle, and then on, ongoing. Um, again, I hope that this video made sense. I hope that the intention came across clear in that the time that you do have, uh, it's, 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 it's valid. The time that you have is absolutely the time that you have. You shouldn't be burned out in this business. You shouldn't try to you know, compare yourself to other people, but you should have a you know, ongoing business, a long-term business uh, that you can invest at least 10, 20 hours a week into every single week. Uh, and then again, that will get you you know, depending on what you're doing, 10 plus deals every single year. Now, if you don't want to hit 10 deals per year, if you're just doing like one every couple months, hey, then you can probably start investing with literally as low as like five to 10 hours uh, every single week. And that's not a lot of time. Uh, and if you wanted to do that, or if you wanted to focus on maybe wholesaling, in my opinion, you're still going to need about 10 to 20 to do things safely and correctly. But anyway, I hope that this made sense. I wanted to get the conversation starting and give you some more input. Uh, if you've ever asked yourself, you know, how much time do I need to start investing? So I hope that this made sense. I feel like I'm rambling now. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions or concerns, you can reach out to me at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. That's support at mobilehomeinvesting.net, or you can check out mobile home investing.net for other mobile home investing related topics and questions and articles and videos. Thanks so much for watching. If you have anything else, you can always reach out or comment below. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.